Okay, welcome to my talk. This is about Messenger, um, true peer-to-peer -peer, um, phone calls. And there's a story behind it I want to tell, and of course what it is, and what uh, it's about. Uh, why I um, took it on me to, to learn Android and stuff. Um, so let's let's go. A bit of information about myself. My name is Moritz um, Warning. Um, funny name. It's it's uh, it's not a Künstlername. It's it's really my name. Um, I'm from Berlin. I'm a software programmer, as uh, I guess a lot of people here. And I feel associated with this Freifunk community. It's a grassroots uh, mesh routing uh, community in in Germany. Um, you have hundreds of those in Germany, and I would describe myself as a mesh routing enthusiast. Okay, let's go in it. Uh, what is it about? What is it? So you might have heard um, already that it's some kind of Android app. It's uh, now written in Kotlin, and it's all about um, audio video calls. Um, that doesn't sound very special at this point, because um, of course you have WhatsApp, you have Facebook Messenger, you have all the other things, but this simple app, really, it's, it's kind of stupid, um, is all about just calling an IP address. So it doesn't use any servers, any mesh, no discovery, as, which is important for Freifunk, for mesh routing networks where you block all, um, almost all broadcasts and can't really do discovery. And of course, it's, it's a GPL, it's, it's a free open source software. And um, now for a bit of background why it came to be. Um, it's basically case for, for, the, for, for no internet. So with Freifunk in Germany, it's uh, most people see it, oh, there's a Freifunk hotspot, I can connect, I have internet, uh, and if I if don't have internet, then it's broken, uh, which is a bit, of sa bit sad, because Freifunk is mostly about uh, having a decentralized infrastructure, where, and in these networks, the internet gateway that is provided usually by the community is all about, I mean, it's just a very popular service, but it's not really what Freifunk is about. Um, and, but the problem is also that since Everybody knows, okay, you can get internet over that. Uh, you don't need the password to, to log in these Freifunk networks, these mesh networks. Um, yeah, that's all y what you know about. And um, there's not really a use case for, for mesh networks without um, internet access. Uh, because there, there's a lack of, of apps, la lots of lack of uh, applications, how to find content, stuff like that. And I thought, okay, maybe we need some kind of demo app for, for Freifunk that is not only for Freifunk, but all kinds of all other things. And I looked around, um, if there is something like that, but actually I wouldn't I couldn't find anything. I, I looked on Google Play, uh, F Droid. Um, no, not really. Um, I couldn't find anything. And um, of course, um, it's really important that I we have something that is not really specific to a certain network. So this app, since it's only calling IP addresses directly, otherwise it doesn't work. Um, it's well, it works at home in your ne own network but you don't even need uh, internet. Um, you, don't, you can use it at, uh, at, yeah, at home, at, at your company, in off-grid situations, in general disaster areas. I mean, maybe you can put up some fry from routers, have some Wi-Fi cloud, um, and then you can use it to, to call people. Mm -hmm. So a bit more background. I mean, this all started 2018. Um, I mean, um, of course, there will be some, some demo um, soon. But let's go a bit down and back in history. Um, I had no idea of uh, Android, develop pr Android development in general. I knew a bit Java from university. Uh, that's not very good. And um, so, but I had this idea, okay, I really would like to have some app like that to exist, but I can't program it. Um, so um, there was a Google Summer of Code um, where Freifunk was participating in and I submitted it as an idea and we found a student and he implemented that um, with WebRTC and over the time, I mean, there were ups and downs and um, in the meantime, I was able to learn Android programming myself. Um, I don't know, um, was interesting experience, um, mixed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, now the software is mostly complete, I would say. Um, a bit about how it works. It's basically you scan a QR code, 
Um, so you have to meet the person you want to, to call. And um, in that QR code, like you see it maybe here in the app, um, it's uh, con just contains a JSON formatted block with some name fields, so it's some nickname, some public key, and then some array of IP addresses. Usually it's just one. Um, <coughs> and it al also have a lot of extra features. Here you see like a, a bit how it looks like. You have a contact list, a call history on the, on the right side um, of the tab there, and uh, okay, I've also opened here the, the context menu, so you can delay it, rename, ping that IP address, and then the red dot will turn maybe green because you can reach that, and then you can make the call. Um, and of course, um, okay, you can, um, yeah, you have all kinds of features. Uh, a bit also a bit weird features like you can auto accept calls. So um, if you want to use it as an intercom system and in your house and want to, I don't know, uh, call the kitchen or something. So I think it's really important that you can use this software for all kinds of different uh, applications, not just Freifunk. Okay, it's about calling. Um, it calls an IP address, so that is lo basically how it looks like. On the right side, uh, you see, okay, this is also the debug menu uh, that you see there, where you can see what codec is currently used, um, bit rate, audio rate, uh, resolution, um, but usually you don't see that. This is what you toggle by, press by tapping on this I icon on the, on the left side, on the top, in the corner. And um, you can, not, of course, not only speak, but also use video. So that's quite nice, um, and um, it's pretty basic. Um, yeah, and lots of other features. I won't go through this. Um, you can set a specific framework, a uh, frame rate. Um, you can disable the proximity uh, sensor. You can use it with a Bluetooth headset. At least I hope it works for most cases. I haven't really tested it a lot. Um, then of course. This is when you use uh, expert um, settings, so this is like everything, but by default it's really a small list. So people, I mean, this is meant to be a simple app, and I don't want to, s we, do we don't want to scare people, um, but this is the full list of all the options, so it's a long list. All right, uh, this is a bit of for, for experts. I mean, this QR code, uh, usually you have the default IP, addr the IP address of your Wi-Fi adapter um, in there uh, when, you st when you start it the first time, but you can configure it and put other stuff in there, like other IP addresses on your, s on your system. You can edit them manually, maybe even a host name. Um, but this is more some expert thing. Yeah, the current state of the project, um, I said it started in 2018, has been written, re rewritten in a um, follow-up uh, uh, Google Summer of Code um, to Kotlin, uh, which I like a bit more than Java, more cleaned up. And, well, it has a lot of releases, uh, lots of commits, um, so basically I would say the, the app, app is done. Um, I mean, you okay? I've, I've told you the name is Messenger, um, but I have to admit um, it doesn't really mesh itself. It's just calling an IP address, and it's also not sending messages. Uh, maybe in the future, but I don't really have like, uh, right now the resources to to implement that. If anybody wants to fork it and do that, or just commit a merge request, you are really welcome. Um, but for now, it's it's good. This is a bit of a GitHub code graph where you see 2018, let's see, yeah, uh, where it was initially done and then, like in sports, uh, I mean, there were lots of gaps where I said, okay, I want to work on, on different stuff. And um, then in the end, you see one big spike where it got converted to Kotlin, and I did a lot of stuff on the right side. Um, so I'm mostly the only person working on it. There were a few merge requests from other people fixing stuff. So that's, that's always awesome and so warms my heart. Um, yeah, this is the GitHub homepage. Um, not that much to see here, more screenshots um, of the app itself. Um, yeah, for the future, I already told, told you, I see it mostly as done, 
And I don't think I want to go into iOS development. Uh, I have other stuff to do with my life. Um, maybe someone wants to use Flutter or something. Well, or just fork the whole app. Um, I don't care. It's open source. Uh, it's meant to be something to support communities. And um, yeah, hopefully we get more translations. I think we have Chinese, uh, Russian translations, um, Ukrainian even. Well, I have to look. I don't know it. And uh, there might be even some, some null pointer exceptions, some, some bugs, but uh, this is still something I'm hunting, but it's more or less stable. And yeah, where to get it? Um, yeah, Afdroid, primarily. Um, on Google Play, you can also find it. Um, but I would prefer Afdroid. Um, yeah, there's also down there the website. Um, for the use of the app, I mean, it it's always interesting to know how many people are using that app. I mean, it has been around since 2018, okay, most features and bugs were fixed lately. Um, for Afdroid, I don't know. Um, they don't know, which I think it's a good idea. But at least I could, uh, s since it's on a Google Play Store, I can show you that data, this data. Um, so Google Play tracks, tracks a lot, and you see um, by now it's somewhat over 500 installations, I think, if I'm not blind, yeah. So that's interesting. So if um, so that's this graph that uh, you can look at if you look at, uh, if you log into the um, developer console when you are signed up for Google Play as a developer for your app. And also have some GitHub statistics, uh, which shows that, yeah, I guess there are some 40 people or uh, unique IP addresses, not people, um, per day uh, accessing the GitHub project. And that's basically it. I can also have uh, now show you maybe a bit of a demo. I mean, I can't sh really show you like uh, my phone screen. It's a bit too small. But um, what I can tell you, um, maybe you have just to believe me, I've installed it here and on this phone. And this is just a small travel Wi-Fi router, which could, of course, be part of a mesh network. And then I can just, OK, I've already did the scanning with the QR code. And then I press it. and. It says connection failed because I'm not in that same VLAN. So I need to switch. OK, let's see. Ah, wrong menu. Let's do that quickly. OK, it doesn't show my travel router. It's Oh, yeah, I'm, I moved it. And that's um, triggered it to restart because the connector is, is kind of bad. OK, but maybe in that meantime, I can tell you something like um, this app only works, of course, on local networks. It's called an IP address. There's no st stun, turn, servers. I mean, it's based on WebRTC, um, but it calls only an IP address. So when you have some net uh, going on, then it doesn't work. I tried it on the internet. We are, well, two routers with a public IP address, no firewall, OK, then, then it works. Also, IP addresses, of course, cause change. So this is kind of a problem. But this, uh, the thing is, with Freifunk networks, you usually get uh, the same IPv6 address for link local, at least, because there's your MAC address of the Wi-Fi adapter inside. So that stays uh, pretty consistent. And um, yeah, and for those scenarios, it's, it's quite, quite nice. It works. But of course, you can just edit this QR code, this address management, and that then add maybe add some host name or something. So that should also work. So let's see maybe if I can make a call. If it's now, I hope the router has booted up again. Ah. Uh, it's, oh yeah, I need to connect to the Wi Fi. Uh, let's check if that phone is also in the same wi Wi-Fi. Yeah, please connect. Obtaining an IP address, so that is look good and looking good. This one is connected, and this is also connected. So, well, let's give it a call. Uh, and that didn't work, of course. Yeah, that's the so-called forfeit effect. Okay, so now it works. Okay, and then I can. Oh no, that was declining. That is not what I wanted to do. 
okay, accept here, and then I can use the phone camera from one phone and then distribute on the other one. I can, well, then enable the uh, switch the cameras, use the camera from both sides, and um, yeah, that's it. So thank you very much for listening. If you have questions, uh, feel free to ask. And then, um, oh yeah, already one question, but maybe let we let uh, this disco train pass by, because otherwise nobody will, will hear. Okay, they got the notice. Thank you. Thanks. A uh, couple of questions. One sure. is um, how bandwidth, low bandwidth friendly is the voice codec? Well, it uses WebRTC, uh, which is uh, rather uh, bandwidth friendly. Um, I had some numbers for the video. It, well, it dep really depends on, on the resolution. Um, there's some default automatic settings, so the resolution will really adjust to how much bandwidth is available. Um, but I would expect it to for, for, for audio f um, to be at li a few kilobytes, uh, slightly over 10 kilobytes maybe. Thanks. And second question is, you mentioned file transfer, so I suppose mm -hmm. in that is also like sending an image and probably more importantly is a, a voicemail. How hard do you uh, think those features would be to implement even if they're not on your to-do list? Okay, so I understood your question is about file transfer, voicemail. Okay, yeah, well, these are all features that can be implemented, um, but, well, no resources right now, no time, but of course it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, uh, over WebRTC you can use specific channels to transfer files. It's mostly in UI thing, I think. So the most work to do is, is to add the, the icons, the menus, and uh, the transfer of the files is not even that much of a big of a problem, but it has to be implemented, of course. More questions? Over there, please. Hello, uh, great app first. Um, regarding the auto acceptance, can you do this like only uh, activate this for all callers or can you also differentiate either all callers or only certain <coughs> callers? Um, I implemented it as uh, a general feature. So uh, I have I know somebody who has a 3D printer in the in the basement. I thought, okay, maybe uh, he can just put his old phone next to it, and then then call that phone of the of the Wi-Fi, and he doesn't have to go down, and then he can check on his uh, his old 3D printer. Um, but well, to answer your question more directly, um, it's just for for everybody. Um, but of course, it could be ma made a per contact setting, okay. but that's not how I did it right now. Okay, thanks. But uh, it's no problem to do that, to implement that. So you said it only works on local networks, yes. but can I use something like WireGuard or ZeroTire to connect two phones via some other tunnel? So or uh, yeah, sure. I okay. mean, you can um, use some, some tunnel uh, on your phone. Then you go to this address management and then say, yeah, my QR code should also contain this, uh, ad the address of this tunnel, local tunnels on tunnel on your phone. And then you need to, well, scan again. To, to add that uh, IP address, and yeah, uh, if there's an IP, is that is so if it's reachable, then of course it works. So I, ca I can choose under which IP I'm, I want to be called, and there's only um, one address in the QR code, or is it all of my IPs? Um, by default, actually, it's uh, the MAC address. I have a special address, basically, of your, um, your Wi-Fi adapter. That's by default if you start the app. Um, and from that, um, link local addresses are then created by default, and also the phone then looks uh, what kind of prefixes you have, IPv6 prefix, and then it puts the, the MAC address of, of the person you want to contact, and hopefully it will get through, but for Firefox this works well, but there are a lot of configuration op options. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks for the nice talk, and I hope you all found it enlightening. Mm -hmm.